Welcome back to the mighty Manning River for day two of the 2022 Tari East Powerboat Classic. June long weekend. Andy Bowen is my name from Andy's Powerboat Videos by Andy's Video Photography. We have got set in for a great day of racing from the blown out alcohol displacement boats, from white noise going back out onto the water. And we've also got uh, the Hyper Fives for round two of their series here in Tari. The next series is, is a Dargle on in in August, and that should be a cracker of a van down at on, on the beautiful Dargle River. And also too, we've got uh, the King of the River this afternoon. We've got Paul Bennett's air show this uh, around about 12 o'clock, so he will be doing his stunt show right across the Manning Vat River, and that will be some spectacular videos to get some from the spectators down on the. Uh, Spectator Mound and all that, so um, it's a bit cold here in Taree. Beautiful sunny day. We could not have had a great sunny day here in Taree over the J June long weekend, and yeah, we're we're set for a great weekend. Andy Bowen in Taree for reporting for Andy's video photography. Blizzard as they go out onto the course just to do a test run. Dean Barry had his uh, engine re uh, changed at Curry Brothers yesterday up at Sam's work, and um, yeah, we had to. Uh, he had to literally change the engine because he blew it on. Um, on Friday, testing tunes. So as we zoom down on to Dean Barry, and she's the culprit too. 
and uh, he's just doing a test run and we have Chris in Explizzard We just had Dean, Dean Barry. Yeah, and I was like, now we got uh, Chris in Explicit. Check one, two, check one, two. So as we have Chris down the bottom turn of bridge end of the course, up onto the back straight, just doing a uh, test, and shoot, test and run on his boat. Race two, race three, heat three of the Hyper Fives here at Tari on the banks of the Manning River on this cold, sunny Sunday morning, uh, afternoon. No, Sunday morning, sorry, still morning. As they all go up into Blackfords Bay, as we've got Paul in impatient. Rocky Valor, son of Paul, Cookie Monster. As they all go up into Blackford's Bay. And that's where the pole boat will bring, warm their engines up. And then the pole boat will bring them down onto the course.
and we will be in for a cracker of a race for race three, heat three of round two of the Hyper Fives series here at Taree on the beautiful banks of the Manning River. The water conditions are a bit choppy, but it should not ha 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 um, disturb the boats. They love this sort of conditions because they skim across the water. So five boats in the Hyper Fives. Andy Bowen is my name from Andy's Powerboat Videos. Got your coverage and your commentator for this weekend. And on Sunday, the 11th, uh, the 12th of June, 2022. Whereas we're waiting for the pole boat to Warren Wright to put the fl white flag up. And the white flag's up. We're going to be set for a cracker of a start for the Hyper Fives round two. So as they come out of Blackford's Bay, five boats, Lockie Vella, Paul Vella, Blake, Cookie Monster, and Graham in Hurricane. As they all come out of Blackford's Bay, As we have Paul Vella, or is it Lockie Vella that's in first place? With Paul Vella side by side as they go up the back straight. No, it's Graham in uh, Hurricane as he come around the turn three and four onto the course. Three and four for the last time. Right, 
Stevenson Memorial here on the banks of the beautiful Manning River. Andy Bowen from Andy's Powerway Videos got your coverage and commentary for this race. This is going to be a cracker of a race. We've got Chris in Explizzard, Peter in the Formula One Powerboat, and as they come out of Blackfoot's Bay down onto the course, set for a start. The white flag is going to be dropped in less than two seconds. And we got Nathan Berry as well, set for a start. And the white flag's down and we're racing. And they don't get up. Two, one, two. Down to turn one and two, bridge end of the course. As they go, who's going to be out of the chute first? And it's Nathan Barry. Oh, he's, he's just looking slow up that back straight. And we got, oh, he's putting the foot down. It's in, see you later. And away he goes, Nathan Barry, absolutely flying up the back straight into turn three and four. We have Jimmy Chase in second place, Peter in the Formula One in third place.
Okay, we've got heat two of the Jeff Stevenson Memorial here at Tari on the banks of the Manning River. We've got Jimmy and Bulldog. Hayden in Fury. Dean Barry in She's the Culprit 2. Kane in the Formula 1 powerboat. Four boats. Here for the Jeff Stevens Memorial. Heat 2. As they come out of, uh, as they're up in Blackford's Bay. Just warming their engines up. Getting ready for set for a start for heat two of the Jeff Stevenson Memorial Trophy here on the banks of the Manning River with Andy Bowen in commentary on your beautiful Sunday morning, the 12th of June, 2022. It's cold. The, the water's choppy but we're set for a start and we're set to go racing here for the two, 2022 Jeff Stevenson Memorial it's a white flags up for heat two So as they come out of Blackford's Bay onto the course, four boats. Bulldog, Kane, Dino, and Hayden in fury. Set for a start. Let's go boat racing with the many. turn, bridge end of the course, Dean Barry up the back straight, just come out of the chute and he is flying up the back straight with Kane in second place, Jimmy and Bulldog not right behind him. As we go down to back down to turn one and two, bridge end of the course, as Dean Barry is absolutely flying up the back straight. No, he has stopped now. Oh no, that's unfortunate for Dean. As we've got Ka Kane and Jimmy in Bulldog. Two boats left in for the hit. Jeff Stevenson Memorial Heat two. Kane are in the round three and four onto the main straight and we have Jimmy in Bulldog onto the main straight. Two of the best boats have been stopped on the main on the on the main on the course. Kane down the bottom turn on the bridge bridge end of the course up the back straight. Pushing that boat like you could could not believe. Onto the back straight, into turn three and four. With Jimmy and Bulldog. And that's the checker flag, and it looks like Kane in the Formula One. Grand Prix Powerboat has just taken the checker flag for Heat 2 of the Jeff Stevenson Memorial here in Tari. So as they all go down to the bridge end of the course. Up 
up the back straight. Back in black, in second place. 105 Superstock. Back straight. Yellow flag flying at the race control. This is the final lap. Top turn three, three and four onto the main straight. Come down, take the checker flag. Takes the checker flag. That was the super stock race 105 mile an hour. Let's have Paul Bennett in his air show coming down, doing some stunts and everything else. Over the hovering over the banks of the Manning River in his Tiger Moth yellow stump plane, his yellow stump plane here on the banks of the Manning River coming up very, very shortly.
as we have Juggernaut in first place, Katie Barry in third place as they all go down the bottom turn. Bridge out of the course, turn one and two. Seagulls all over the place on the main straight. Down to turn one and two, Juggernaut. Up the back straight he comes. Cody Barry in third place, just hanging in there. Absolutely flying up that back straight, Juggernaut, Juggernaut is. So as we have Juggernaut in first place, Cody Barry in third place. That thing is absolutely flying up the back, down the main straight. Cody Barry's pushing that uh, second place boat in to the, to the max. Side by into, into turn three and four onto the main straight. Takes the checker flag. Juggernaut in first place. Cody Barry's pushing for third. Is he going to get second? We don't think so, no. Six litre race as they come out of Blackford's Bay. Ryan McIntosh, Greg Storner in Have A Go. As they come on to the main straight. Image. As they're set for a start and they go crazy. turn, bridge into the course, down to turn one and two, as it looks like Ryan McIntosh in lock and load onto the back straight, and he is thundering up the back straight in that awesome machine in lock and load, followed by Christ Order in have a go, in second place, Image in third place. To the turn one and two onto the back straight. Thundering up the back straight, Ryan, attack, Ryan McIntosh. Lock and load. to Ryan McIntosh, second place to Greg Sorter, welcome, um, have a go, 
third place to Image. And fourth place goes to Rastus. Jeff Stevenson Memorial final here at Tari on the beautiful banks of the Manning River. Nathan Barry, Kane in, in, the, in the Formula One pa Grand Prix powerboat. Jimmy in Bulldog. As they're all up into Blackford's Bay, Jeff Stevenson Memorial Final. Who's it gonna be? Nathan Barry, the real culprit. Kane in the Formula One Grand Prix power, G GP. Or is it gonna be Jimmy and Bulldog? We'll soon find out in four laps time. What a beautiful sunny day here in Tari on the banks of the Manning River on the 12th of June 2022. Little breezy. Conditions are looking just a, a, stunning. Absolutely stunning. You cannot get any better than what you could of having today. So as we see the boats. Warming their engines up. <laughs> Circling around. Up the top of Blackford's Bay. And as soon as we see that pole boat flag go up, we will be set for a race start. And up she goes. Jeff Stevenson Memorial Final, ladies and gentlemen, on the banks of the Manning River. So as they come out, Kane on the on the inside of the bank. Pete in there, in there as well. As they come out of Blackford's Bay, Nathan Barry closest on the outside. Set for a start. Let's go, boat racing. And the as they all go down to the bottom of the turn, turn one and two, bridge end of the course. Onto the back straight. Who's it gonna be out the top of the, of the chute? And it's Nathan Barry, thundering up the back straight. Upside down, it looks like Kane flipped it. He did, and he's out of the he's out of the powerboat. He's okay. He's okay. I didn't get that on film, but. Piper Fives out of the top turn, out of the top of Blackford's Bay, 
Five boats. Paul Vella. Lockie. Blake. Cookie. As they all come out of Blackford's Bay, down onto the course. Down the bridge turn. Turn one and two. Who's out of the shoot first? It's Paul Vella. In impatient. Jeff Stevenson Memorial Final. Chivy Chase. Damien. Nathan Barry, the real culprit. Dean Barry, she's the culprit too. Chris in Explizzard. And Jimmy in Bulldog. Four laps of the Jeff Stevenson Memorial Final here at Taree on Sunday, the 12th of June, 2022. All blown boats. No F1s 
they all they just blow over. We had a blow over on down on the bottom of the turn, bridge end of the course in Kane. And um yeah, so as soon as we see that white flag go up, we will be set to go right racing for the Jeff Stevenson Memorial. The final. This is for the trophy. The Jeff Stevenson Memorial Trophy. Flags up. White flags up. On the pole boat. As I go through the poles again, Jimmy and Bulldog. Have a go. Craig's daughter. Chris and Nick's Blizzard, Nathan Barry, in the in the real culprit, Dean Barry, she's a culprit too. Four boat. Ryan McIntosh walking low. And Ryan McIntosh. Six boats coming out of Blackford's Bay onto the course. Set for a start. Let's go, boat racing on the Minnick River. Who's out of the chute first? And it's Dean Barry. Up to Nathan Barry in second place. Oh, look at that shot of the wings in the background. Oh, side by side. that was just run and won by Nathan Barry was a part of the Victor Curry Cup and it goes now to Nathan Barry in she's in, in the real culprit I don't think so So as we find out now, Nathan Barry is victorious for the Victor Curry Cup. On Sunday, the 12th of June, 
2022. Six litres. 105. 105s. Out of Blackford's Bay, down onto the course. Set for a start. Let's go, boat racing. Bottom turn, bridge out of the course, turn one and two. Out of the chute is Juggernaut. Cody Barry in second place, push it for first. Go, Cody! Let's go. These boats are doing over 120 mile an hour here, usually on the water. Uh, there's a lot of wind coming up the course these days, so the boys have to really be on their ball. On that. Um, they do have a canard wing at the front of the boat, um, which actually stops the boat from flipping over. They can use it. It's actually the opposite to a cavitation plate on a boat. They actually use the cavitation plate on a displacement boat, but in a hydroplane, we actually use a canard wing, which is at the front of the boat. They still have to actuate these uh, by pedals. Uh -huh. But here we go, we're just about to start the last boat. Green flag, guys, right to go. We've got a green flag up now, we've got a green flag ready to go racing. And then. So Lockie and, Lockie and Blake have already left the bank, so we're just about to leave the bank here now.
we're actually just watching the boys all up there mill around. We have five boats in this class, which is pretty good for our hydroplane class up here at Tauri on the many. We usually don't get this in the many, but here we are today, and then we have five, five decent hydroplanes that uh, these are capsule boats actually. So that means they're actually in safety cells, they're on air. And as you'll notice, the boys have to go up there and mill around, wait for the start boat, but they'll all come down in one line, and as that start boat drops the flag, they're off. Waiting for them now as the start boats up there, they're still under green flag orders. Uh, we should uh, start the next couple of minutes. This is a very competitive one, this is five very close to the point. We're going to be driving this new class up. Uh, we have been a real competitive class. To see this new hydro plane on our river is just a, a sight to sore eyes would be the best way to get it.
there about, looks like one, two, three, four, five, six boats in this. One of the top boats we have here is a very class boat driven by Hayden, which is a Fury boat. Uh, the Cheshire Family Racing has been around for a long, long time. The Cheshire Family Racing with Colin and Barry, who is the consummate professional of racing. But here we are now with a new boat. Uh, looks like it's got one of Chris Palmer's cells in the boat. Um, at the end of the day, you can see the hydroplane milling up there, still putting that big rooster tail off the side of it all. Our displacements don't disperse as much water as the hydroplanes, but the same token, uh, the uh as quick and if not quicker at certain, with certain boats. Um, they're just getting ready to start boats up there milling around as well. Uh, this should be a full, not a full up race here folks. Um, uh, we should see Bulldogs in there, we have Fury in there, we have uh, we have Lockie Vella actually running the hydroplane at the moment in there as well. So Lockie's up there in there. There's a couple of six litre boats. We have uh, Ryan McIntosh from Lock and Load in there. Uh, and I think we have our yellow boat. I'll just have to check out who's driving this one at the moment. But they're under the starter's orders now. The fl white flag is up. They're ready to go. Here they come down the course. Now you can see the big GB hydroplane on the outside. Or the hydroplane on the outside. Fury's on the inside. We have one, two, three, four, six boats in this. Oh, they're getting a bit close there as they come, as they come in. This is going to be a great race, this one in the pack, Dio. And there's Chevy Chase on the pole two. And they bulldog in pole one. And racing, we're racing now. And are they off to the first turn? Fury got away from the base start. Bulldog, Chevy Chase, with Damon Perdua on the ball. They're teeing down to the first turn. This is where dramas can happen at the first turn. And they, they've all looks like they're into it and made it through first. And they say, who's it coming out of it? Looks like we have Chevy Chase in the lead. Oh, Damon Fergal, he just did something wrong then. No, it's Ryan McIntosh in... Yes, Ryan McIntosh in rock and load and has taken the lead out. We have Bulldog in second. And Chevy Chase is just coming up in the third place. What a good race this is. It looks like Chris Lewis is in there in, in there the, the, the mix as well. Yes, it is Chris Lewis in image. And that Bulldog takes off. He's just saying Chris Lewis in image is in third. Chevy Chase is in third. And that Rocky Lewis in fourth. And Hayden in, the, in Fury's in now in fifth place. What a race, folks. You can see the difference between the displacement boat and the big GP hydroplanes as they turn into the corners. And that here's lock and loaded by Ryan McIntosh has got that thing flying. And that it's only a little six litre Roush Yates boat, but my God, that don't that yet. Roush Yates motor work. Now, as you notice, these boats are all cell boats, and that anything that goes over 100 mile an hour, we need to have a cell boat. Whoa! Bulldog nearly lost himself there. Caught a bit of a lip and looked up. There comes Chevy. Oh, Chevy Chase has got him! He's chasing Chris Lewis now. Chris Lewis and Chevy Chase. They're side by side in turn one. Oh, Fury's now going to flip. Hayden's gone crazy. Hayden nearly flipped the Fury boat over there. Just as they come out of there, they put the power down. And because you've got 1,500 horsepower, man, he always has to spit that boat with the propeller. Okay, we still have Lock and Loaded in first place, and we have Bulldog in second. We have Image, Chris Lewis in left, Image in third, Damon Thurger in fourth, and Chevy Chase. Well, look, here we go. Bulldog trying to get that power down, and not lose it. So here you go, Chevy Chase in the same position as well. Oh, it's getting a bit hard for them all. Hey, in fifth place, isn't it? And that's the end of that race, folks, but... Oh! Now that was exciting folks. That's what the power of those boats can do. And they, they can put pop all those boats for miles if they really wanted to. With the gearbox, so if their motor's revving at about 8,000 revs, you can imagine their propellers are spinning at a lot quicker than that. Uh, 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 Andy? So yeah, look, this is amazing to be just here on the river again and filming it and doing it all with you, mate. But let's be having a great time. But anyway, let's go. Mate, let's uh, say congratulations to Ryan McIntosh. What a great win to see my, right, the local boy from uh, McGrath's meets and Kerry McGrath too. Yeah, that's right. You know, lock and loaded. Uh, Ryan, Ryan McIntosh is one of our local boys here, and that's just great to see him do so well on the boat to be reliable. But it's just great to see all the boats on the water, back here on the water, on the main river again. Yeah, it sure is, mate. Sure is. And uh, we don't want to see any more of that uh, stuff that makes that, that stops the racing here in Tarry. 
because uh, that, that stuff stops powerboat racing, doesn't it, Vici? Yeah, no, when we have accidents and that, you know, we can have some horrific accidents. That's why we're all in cell boats these days. If you're not in, if you go over 100 mile an hour these days, you need to be in the cell boat. Um, look, at the end of the day, you know, racing's rubbins racing. That when the flag drops, the bullshit stops. But look, uh, we try to do it as safely as we possibly can, and that's where uh, the boys are in safety cells. They're all on air masks and that. They've actually uh, the safety that goes into this is incredible. You know. I've got to say, Vici, mate, there's, uh, we, 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 I wish we had Easter out on the each Easter weekend, but uh, unfortunately we had over a feet or maybe two feet of water down here on the banks of the beautiful banks of the Manning River. Yeah, we did have a lot of water there, and there's a lot of like, flotsam and jetsam that flows from up the river back down. That was the main reason the, the race was stopped. But look, to see us here on the Queen's birthday weekend, usually it was cracking not many years ago, so we went off with a bang. Well, we're banging here with baits. Oh, yeah, mate, definitely it was, and uh, I, I went down to the EC Grill of Cup down at Yarrawonga, and I tell you what, mate, that was absolutely sensational, that, and I took mum and dad down there, and, and they absolutely loved it. The best powerboat races down there at Yarrawonga and Lake Marwara, mate, what, a, what an absolute cracker event that was. Mate, that's a, one of the best tracks in Australia down there. It's a big track, a lot of hard water. When I say that hard water, there's a lot of different spots of the track that can create different Im images for you. Like there's a few big holes in the water there that you might not see as the water level, but as the boats go across them, you'll watch them take off and fly sometimes. But man, what a track to watch racing out of Yarrawonga. Oh, it sure is, mate. Sure is. And I reckon, right, Vici, next time when we hear that powerboat racing's on in, in somewhere in our beautiful uh, country called Australia, in the in the land of uh, motorsport, mate. Uh, I think they're on next weekend down at uh, Windsor. I'll be definitely going down for that one. You should come and join me so we can do a bit of commentary, mate. Mate, I'll be there for you. No worries, Andy. We'll, we'll have a great day down there at Windsor. That's our home. So look, let's just take it back to the home of racing and see how we go. All good. Well, I'll see if I can uh, uh, get my uh, support worker and see if we can. Um, uh, I'll ask my one and see if we can. Uh, Get uh, you to come down and uh, we'll, we'll go and do the vintage uh, uh, hydros. Well, I'm, I'm getting a bit old myself, so the vintage hydroplanes might be something that suits me really well into the ground, Andy. So you can stay with the young guys and I'll stay with the old blokes. How's that sound? Nothing wrong with that, Vici. Nothing wrong with that at all, mate. Um, but, uh, mate, I've got to say, what absolute c cracker event uh, with Paul Be Be Bennett in his... Uh, in his stun plane, how good was that? Ah, oh, Paul Bennett, mate, what a legend. You know, he flies like 10 feet off the wall, stalls the plane, looks like he's going to crash every time. But he, he is amazing. He is dead set amazing, you know. Um, yeah, look, this is about the third or fourth year that Paul's been here, maybe the fifth year. Um, but, yeah, look, he is stunning. Yeah, so... Uh, Mate, I've got to say, uh, I know it's been a bit, a, a bit cold for us uh, spectators and us uh, officials, but I tell you what, um, I, I, I love this town. This is my hometown, and I know I'm Sydney-based, but uh, I love coming back to the ba beautiful banks of the Manning River. Mate, look, this has just been one of the spectacular weekends we've had up here. Look, we don't always have this beautiful weather. We had a bit of wind this morning, but look, it's actually died off as the afternoon's come off. We've got great water, really. If it's too glassy, it actually makes the boat suck down and it's not sa as safe. This, with a bit of a break and a bit of water, water movement, is actually perfect for us. The boys get to drive into the wind. They know what they're doing when they're doing it. They can feel it over their first few practice lessons. But at the same token, Things happen in racing, you know, so you've got to be very careful still, you know. As we've had a couple of accidents today, watched one of the Formula One boys go over and that. Thank God he's still all right. That's the main thing, you know. That's why, we, that's why they're all in safety cells now. Yeah, that is right, mate. And we're, unfortunately, about 10 years ago, we did lose uh, our, our legend of the sport, and that was, uh, unfortunately, Brian McCosker. And... Um, yeah, it, it, he's, but he's, uh, as I was saying to Nathan Barrett yesterday, uh, to, uh, when, in she's in the, in the real culprit, and, uh, I said to him, mate, I could hear, uh, Brian talking to you in the boat. He was going like, oh, go, push it, mate, push it, mate, go, go, go. And, uh, and he, he just, that boat, I tell you what, Vici, it is an absolute machine. Look, I helped Nathan out on Friday and that one of his hatch bolts jammed up, then we got it. So I've, I've actually said that it was part of me helping him get that hatch working right that's actually done him so well. But yes, look, we've got Brian McCosker's boat up here at Liberty at the moment. Loader race here. And that, we have four boats. We have lock and loaded on the clock on the inside. We have four boats here. Chris Lewis. Not sure of all the names of these boats, folks, but they're racing. Which one's like a loader and Ryan McIntosh? Chris Lewis and the image has gone very fast straight away. Coming down to the first turn. You notice the boats don't displace as much water, even though they're displacement boats. 
watching these boys in their cell base they turn and they do push a lot of water through. Okay, looks like Ryan McIntosh is out in first place there. Chris Lewis and Image is in second. Not sure of the third and fourth base, but there's still a good race. It's very close for third and fourth place. Looks like Ryan Pack. Oh, Ryan McIntosh and Rock and Load have got a little bit hard to go on there. You can see when they come in the corner how much they have to push down on that cut plate to get that boat down into the water, get the turn fit in. Here we go. All races are usually four laps, folks. Four laps around here. And that they're mostly doing around about 125 to 130 mile now at the, at the top speed at the end of the straightaway. And then pull down on their cavitation plate, which is a big metal plate along the back of the boat, which is actuated by their foot in the cell of the boat. And it looks like Ryan's on it too. He's getting, as they get along the straightaway, they get off the plate, trying to get the boat to fly as high as they can. And it looks like Ryan's doing a very great job out there in front. Chris Lewis looks like he's coming up in an image. He's in second. Or Craig could even Craig Lewis, I should say. There's a few boys with different drivers in these places these days. And it, out the field. Oh, look at that turn on the turn, boy, there. What a great turn. Some of these boats, they're presented beautifully. Just to buy yourself one of these boats, just a boat alone, without a motor, you're looking around about seventy to $80,000. Then you've got to put the cost of a trailer and a motor and a driver and all his gear, and then you've got to enter the races and actually get to the races. Uh, but our local driver, Ryan McIntosh, is doing a great job at the moment. Ryan's just pushing the boat, rock and loaded. He's just come around his last turn, boy. Coming up for the checkered flag here. Looks like Lewis is in second place in image. Done a great job. Queenslander, he hasn't won the state of origin, but he's come second here today. And it, some beautifully prepared boats here. Well, that's another day on the Moon River face. We have another five little race coming up after this. And then our last race of the day, which is the King of the River. And, uh, which has all the top qualifying boats in it from the King of the River. But uh, Memorial Rerun, uh, it was actually run earlier on today, but because they only did a lap and a half, they cannot hold the, or contest the event. We need to actually hold a two and a half laps before the event can be called an event or a race. So that's why they are rerunning the, the event. Nathan Barry in the real culprit actually was already awarded the trophy, poor, poor boy. But at the end of the day, um, it had to be rerun again because we didn't have enough laps under the belt to, to, to constitute a race. Now this will be a race. So, look, we could have, this could be the Commodore's Cup even, this one. Uh, but look, at the end of the day, we've got some, pr we've got some pretty powerful boats here. We've got the real culprit out there. We've got one of the top Formula One boats here. We've got two other blind boats sitting in there as well. But it's, it's just the start of a new era of powerboat racing right, with all these cell boats. So as you can see, fates are up in the bay. They're just about to mill around up there. We've only got four boats starting this race, but you know, four boats, four, five boats, six boats. We're only ever allowed eight boats wide on the track. This is the, the rerun of the Jeff Stevens Memorial. So here we go, folks. Um, well, we don't actually run for a lot of money in powerboat racing, which is a shame because we don't have the cubic dollars that other sports have, um, even though this costs hundreds of thousands of dollars. So yeah, as a, as a, um, Dreci was saying, it, the uh, it, it's all about vo voluntary. Uh, uh, some of the it's not a, a paid uh, sport like it is for the drivers, but uh, for us volunteers and cameramen and, and commentators, uh, it's, it's just all voluntary. Yeah, it is, Andy. You know, like, and it's a pleasure to be here. You know, to be able to stand on the side of the river. You know, watch watch hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of money just fly past you. Sometimes you watch hundreds of thousands of dollars worth fly past you and blow up, and and it costs the boys a lot. But yes, it is a, a great sport to be. And I wish people would get more involved. In it. Powerboat racing has been around since the day we've ever been able to put a boat on the water. Someone wanted to race each other. Um, as you can see, the boat mills around because as you can see, there's a lot of rollers coming through the river at the moment. Those rollers can affect the boats in massive ways and that. But so yeah, they, they can. They actually try to make sure that the water's pretty flat before they start off with that, the start boat. As you can see now, okay, the white, 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 flag flag up. Up, white flag's up, so we're ready to race. They come down and follow Hang on the to your hats. Hang on to your heads. This will be a race, this one. And then we'll see how Nathan Barry goes again. Pole sitters, please, mate. Pole sitter Nathan Barry. I think we have... Uh, 
in second is, is Bulldog, in third is Chevy Chase, and in fourth is on our, our Formula One powerboat. Peter, his name is. Peter's in, in, on the Formula One. They're racing, racing. What a great start. Oh, very even at the moment. Very, very even for the first turn. Okay. They've got to hold their line on the first turn. They cannot come in and change lines. They must hold their line on the first turn. Looks like Nathan Barry's got around there first. And that Chevy Chase is out wide. Yes, they've got their power. You can hear them putting that power down. They must be doing about 140, 150 mile an hour at that back straightaway. Bulldog in second place. Chevy Chase in third. Nathan Barry in first place in the real culprit. And that Bulldog coming up in second. Watch them put this power down and they come out of the turns, folks. Now, Chevy Chase in third place. What a race. They're very close to the front here. There's not much between them both. This is really pushing the pedal to the middle here. So Nathan Barry's gone around turn one in first place. Bulldog in second. Chevy Chase in third and Paul in third. And then, oh, it looks like Bulldog's really got his run on him now. On the back straightaway. Looks like Bulldog's taking over Nathan Barry. Nathan Barry's got to put his pedal to the middle now. Here we come into the corner. Nathan's got holding the inside lane. He's got a tight line on him. Bulldogs trying hard. They're putting the pedal to the middle, folks. This is racing. So we have Chevy Chase still coming around turn four. Yes, what a sight to see in that racing craft. It was actually built by Bobby Thurgood, that boat, Chevy Chase, many years ago. Are right, they coming into turn one? Bulldog, Nathan. Yes, it's a very close race here. Real, real culprit coming up the inside. Right, sounds like it's gone a bit fat, the boat. Right there, Nathan's trying hard. Bulldog's on the outside. He's got a better run on him. And it's going to be hard. And Bulldog's going to win it. Nathan Barry in second. And Chevy Chase in third. What a race, face. What a race that was. And... That was amazing, folks. It took my breath away just trying to watch it and, and listen. The noise that they make out of these big zooming pipes is incredible. And, uh, but to see Chevy Chase there with Damon Thurger, Paul in the Formula One, don't be disappointed, Paul. You at least you made the final. It does take a lot to qualify for these races. It's, it's not just you go in the race and pay for a race. You've actually got to go in there and some of these races you've got to qualify for. Uh, looks like Nathan may have won the first round. Lucky Pete for making that race. Uh, like I was just going to say, Vici, Vici but uh, mate, when you've got two, uh, three or three blown boats and a, a Formula One powerboat Grand Prix one, mate, that uh, it, it's pretty hard to catch after them. It certainly is, you know. But I tell you what, Bulldog did a great job of catching up to the real culprit there. You know, like Nathan was on the pedal to them straight away. But Bulldog has done run so well, so well, so well. What a great race in that. And uh, thank you very much, folks, for having us here today. And that, but we'll see you back in the next race here.
is uh, the f- former Arthur Baker boat, and that now owned by Graham and Kieran Hurley. And that Rick's usually driving the boat all the way from Grafton. All the way from Grafton up that way. Yeah, all, all the way from Grafton. So that's a bit of a treat down for them, but ah, uh, oh, they, they love powerboat racing as much as we do. Yeah, it's nice. Nice to see the the green. I'd never met them prior to before, all this before, but uh, this is about the second or third time I've seen the boat run. It's beautiful presented all the time, you know. The Howards and Graham have done a great job, and Green, I should say, have done a great job of preparing this boat, you know what I mean? Yeah, he's over there, speaking of the devil. I mean, yeah, at the end of the day, Mr Healy's over here, we should get him onto a TV camera here after this race and maybe do a bit of an interview and ask him why he got involved with uh, Grand Prix hydroplane racing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Usually, ra- usually racing these days is how quick do you want to spend cubic dollars, you know, uh, as boat stands for, but it's bring out another thousand. So, yeah, no, it's nice to see the Hurleys have come here, got the boat off uh, uh, the Baker, and that. They run a 510 uh, methanol alcohol big block motor in these boats, and that, they're restricted to 510 cubic inches, and that, but that's enough to push these boats around about 160 to 180 mile an hour around this track, you know what I mean? Nathan Barry out on the silver course. So Nathan's out there, we've got Tony out there, we've got Bulldog out there, we've got Chris and Chris, Chris, Chris Images out there as well. Oh, no. And White Noise will be the last one to, to escape the Chris Chris the race. So that, that this should be a tough race, I guarantee you. Yeah, and that Chris 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 just about to crank you up. The noise of these bases is incredible, folks, because they just come straight out of the zoom. There is no like exhaust pipe and silences and muffles on these bases just come straight out of the zip. Wow, that's a beautiful sound. What a sound here. What do you think of that sound that boat took off? Oh, mate, that thing absolutely sounds awesome, Richie. Uh, hopefully that uh, Lindsay can pull it out and uh, he will go and win that uh, that hourglass, mate, that hourglass is about nearly 50 feet long. Mate, it's amazing to watch big GP hydroplanes. If you've never seen it face, you know, you've got to get up to a boat race and watch your Grand Prix hydroplanes run around. Even though our displacement boats make these things look silly at times, but we're the same take, and this will be a race of races. This is our king of the river, the race, the final race of the day, and that, and that just to show what our true professionals, our consummate professionals of this sport are involved in, you know. Uh, look, there's the oil milling around up there in the start boat. The start boat will raise the white flag up. Once that white flag's raised up, I'll come down in the line, and um, when the flag drops, that bullshit will stop there. But at the end of the day, look, we won't swear too much on this thing here because we are talking to all these lovely people out there with the big wide world of uh, WW World Wide Web and other things that you might see. www.andyspowerboatvideos.youtube.com Well, you heard that from Andy himself there. www.andy's videos and that. And I'm Anthony Veach trying to help Andy out here with the commentary. And here we are, we're coming up. Flags up, flags up. Flags are up, guys. Here we go. Set for a start and King of the River. They're set for the start and the King of the River here at Tari Manipur. 2022, King of the River. Right, here they are. One line. You see the white flag in in this inside boat held up. That flag distinguishes the start. When they drop that flag, that means go. And here we go. They're racing. Still there. 
Davis, the quarterback player of that class, he usually is here to race the conditioning, but the heavy in the Jerry Long making, Corey Fairfax making that one a trip we've all had. The weather's been great, the air's been cool, so it makes the motors run even better. But my boy, I mean, we gained in racing. The last bit of racing is commentating the last bit of all this. And we can hear him over, he's giving his boat a bit of a crack. And uh, he will be happy as a big input. And, uh, Nathan's been absolutely hard on that boat all, all weekend, mate. He's, uh, he won the, uh, the, the Liberty Cup. He also won the Victor Brett Curry Cup, mate. And he's also won the, uh, the King of the River. That boat has come a long way. After last weekend at Adelaide, holy crap and moly, mate. He brings it back to Tari and she puts on a show here on the banks of the mighty Manning River. Well, here comes Nathan Barry now. He's uh, coming back. He's got his lift uh, settling up now. Is that a good one? He's trying to do a jogging cross and do a pop stand here, mate. So that, but, uh, but it's nice to see those beautiful child's play boats in it. And the uh, Nathan Barry, his father, Dean, they've been in the racing for a lot of years now. Uh, Paul Long, they're a great second place in it. And they're staying in the third place as well. On that, on that. So, yeah, no, it's been a great weekend, folks, and that, and that, so we're just trying to film the last part here, and that, just, uh, yeah, 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 day, uh, you come out in front of me. What a great weekend here we were at the time, we've got a load of 25 races, folks, uh, this has been one of the weekends that to remember, you know, we've got everything from GP hydroplanes, we've had a great group of people, five litre hydroplanes here, you know, Nathan Barry, Dean Barry, we had the constables up here with their new flat bottom boat, that, We've had all the way up there for us here. Craig Bailey's come back out of retirement nearly to come up here and race again. Now, actually, now, I've, apparently, I just got told by Chris that might now be, that has been sold. And that Craig Bailey's basically sold, so they've got to be It was actually Chris's body. It was only another, going to be another person coming in your power boat race by the looks of it. So oh, this is great. But from, Andy, from Andy and Anthony Future, we've had a great weekend. This is a pleasure to work with Andy and his dad, Matt. But uh, so I'm signing off for the weekend. Uh, well, I'm going to come around here and say goodbye and that as well. Yeah, how are you, Andy? How, how, how have you had the weekend going? Mate, hey, I didn't think I was going to make it, uh, Beachy, because I've had a two-day uh, uh, sickness and uh, I caught it up on the train up here in, uh, uh, on, from Sydney to, to, uh, uh, to Wingham on Tuesday. And um, I spent Wednesday and Thursday in bed and I was crook as a dog and then Friday went uh, on test and tune day, I was like barking like a mongrel dog and like <laughs> I said to myself like to mum and dad and they said you're not well enough to go and I said mum, dad, I don't care, it's powerboat racing, it's my job to work so I've got to go. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you here. You've been doing this for a few years now and you're actually getting more professional as you, as you go along with it. Notice we've got better cameras. We've actually got our cordless mics these days. We're, we're doing really well. And it's going to be a pleasure down next week and we'll see you, see you at the Vintage Powerboat Race and Up Horsham Powerboat Club. That should be a lot of fun, Andy. I definitely will be, Vichy. And uh, also, too, I've got, I recently looked at my uh, videos from 2012 to 2010 uh, Tari Powerboat Club. Um, I've got videos on the Tari Aquatic Powerboat Club YouTube channel, which I'm in now uh, the administrator for. So there's videos of, uh, of old videos here in, in Tari shot by me, but the qualities aren't as good as what I've got now. But um, this is a $4,000 camera, this thing, and uh, I've worked up from like a, a, a Canon power shot um, a little digi camera, which was only about that big, to a... Um, <laughs> to a, like a $4,000 um, Sony uh, NX100 and uh, it, it allows me to do interviews, it allows me to do uh, commentary and I, I tell you what Beachy, it's, it's um, my videos from at least I'd say um, from 2021 I think when I, when I, bought, when I bought it, it, have, it has improved because all my other videos from uh, it, back in the past, they, the quality looked Pretty terrible, but um, when you when you go professional and you make your what and you, and you and you start to get up there, your your videos start to look really good. So you yeah, know, it'll be a pleasure Andy, to see some of the new videos of that, and especially some of the old videos because we've had some unbelievable racing here. If you've never been into powerboat racing, folks, you need to come and spend a weekend with us. You know, it's not just the Tari Manning River here. We're actually not only far from the coast here. We've got some beautiful countryside out the back of us at the Barrington Tops and all that. So Manning, is, Manning River in it is one of the most special parts of our world. 
And I'm glad everyone doesn't really know about it sometimes, Andy, but hey, mate, I think they better make their tracks up here and see how they can enjoy our part style of life here. Yeah, that's exactly right, VG. And uh, also, too, we've got um, the Mi uh, Mid North Coast Speedboat Club, um, Fred Williams uh, Ski Memorial, coming up in, in July down at Tom Curry. Yeah, that's a great thing, the Speedboat Club, isn't it, that they've set up down there. It's, it's still an AP Valley powered affiliated races. It's actually more of a display weekend, but it's amazing some of the people that there. We've had Aussie, Oz, Oz Boats there, which is Baz Lohman's brother in one of the offshore power boat races. We get all the old classic boats, we get a lot of the ski race boats down there. It's great to see, and then we get a lot of the old hydroplanes that come out too. Um, and just to see some of the boats that turn up is just truly amazing, you know, that how long we've actually been on the water for as power boat races. Oh yeah, definitely, Beachy, yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's great to see like uh, old um, ski boats as like as you've got you've got ski boats you've got uh, power boats you've got uh, offshore power boats down there at the I think the uh, triple tri triple twenty two brink comes up from um, from Newcastle and um, yeah they, they have a run on the on the uh, lakes of uh, Wallace Lake out, out uh, just in front of the bridge and uh, what, I've, what I've seen and uh, oh, I definitely want to come up for that event uh, I don't know when about it is but. Um, yeah, like, uh, I've just got to say, like, uh, 3rd and 4th of July. 3rd and 4th of July, we've just heard from my cameraman, so, um, yeah, and I, I'm i hoping I can stay at my That's dad's your dad, day. you know. Oh, uh, it's my dad, yeah. Uh, cameraman, dad, yeah, cool, thanks, dad. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, and it also looks like we've got a half full moon, so it looks like there's a full moon on the way, Beachy. Yeah, no, that's pretty good. All the crazes will be coming out in the full moon, you know, so I'm usually one of those, yeah. yeah also, so, uh, some fishing uh, tips as well, so is there any fishermen out there that love well, going fishing? Like, well, there has been some good fish in the river. I just caught a big jewfish a couple of weeks ago. I don't know if that's got anything to do with power, but we were in a boat, Andy, when we caught it. So yeah, that's, 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 that's the main part of it all, you know. That's exactly right. What a pleasure to wrap this weekend up here with you, and that um, shame I didn't get here a bit earlier on that, but that's we'll make it for the future now, Andy. Uh, we've got a bright future. Yeah, pleasure seeing you, my pleasure friend again. And, and we'll and do this all over again, Andy. And we'll do it again all and over again on, back in. Uh, on uh, Sunday, Sunday down at uh, the mighty Windsor River. Mighty Wind Horsebury River. I think and here comes up, um, White noise. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll swing the, the, the camera around. Really out. got a, a head there. Something happened in turn one on Lizzy and didn't really get past there. Maybe it's blown a belt or done something silly again, but. Look, that's part of power boat racing, you know. Um, it's it's a very fick, fickle sport. Things can go well, really well, or things can go really, really bad. Um, yes, they sure can, VG, and that and, and, and part, power boat racing is the part of G, GP motos. They turn on a show. They're, they're, the, they're the water show of the of the of the land. Like they spit out about 110 ton of water on, on the top turn or the bottom turn at near at, at, at Tari and down at Yarrawonga. Mate, 110 ton of water is an absolute flaming heat and heck of water. Yeah, you can see it coming off the turn fins and off the propeller when they're going down the straightaway off the roots of tail and when they hit the turn, the big turn fin engages a ton of water, tons of water, and it's amazing the boats can even go around with the amount of power and the amount of water and load that's on them, it's amazing they don't break up more than they do. And, uh, but as you can see, we're all in the, in the safety cells these days, all the boys are on air, you know, it's a, it's a very professional sport these days, even though we don't have the cubic dollars backing us, but, you know, in time I think this will happen as, as people start to realise how exciting this sport is of powerboat racing. It'll just turn turn the hands of time, and hopefully a lot more people will come on board and help us out. And hopefully we can get a bit of help out too, Andy, uh, with the sponsor from Andy for Andy's videos. Yeah, definitely, uh, Beachy. And I've got some of my stickers on the, some of the power boats down at, um, at Yarrawonga. I put it on uh, Turn It Up. I put it on Cray Stores boat out in Havago, and um, I'm, I want to try and put it on Grand Healy's boat, um, but uh, yeah, not as yet. But because I ran out of stickers, but. Um, if I get some more, I'll be definitely putting them on. Right, right enough, Andrew. We've still got the we've still got the GoPro on the boat anyway, Andy. Well, look, hey, signing off from me and from you. Uh, been a pleasure to work with you all weekend and Dad and Mum. So look, I uh, say from the Manning River, bye for all the folks. Hope we'll catch up with you again. And we'll see, see you. And we'll see you in Windsor. Yeah, see you in Windsor, buddy. And as we get better at the, the communication and Andy, we'll, we'll get better with what we're saying, how we're doing the interviews, and all that sort of stuff. You know what I mean?
Is there an internal uh, motor? No, there's not. Set it up. Uh, do you know how to remember how, how it was? It's all set to go. You're just going to plug it into channel 2. Channel 2. I'm not much of a Thanks for having me.
in the Victor Curry Cup. Ryan McIntosh in second place.
Thank you for following the rough and the handle. The brain dad. This is great. Ruffy, Joel, Brendan, everyone who got in and helped all weekend. Rob and Rhonda, thanks for turning up. Hopefully you can see next time. Thank you for coming. I'd just like to thank the Tauri Club, the Club, um, as everyone else has said, all the people have made it happen uh, behind the scenes, the town, and um, uh, Lewis's father in law for coming down and helping us. And um, it's up for the weekend. Uh, he's passionate about the sport. We're all getting out there one day. Uh, whether he's hanging on to Grim Death or not, I'm not sure. <laughs> but uh, thank you again. Thanks.
over for today. Come down. We're going to do a um, full order of sleep in the box. Right. Thank you very much, Ryan. Uh, very, very honored to be I am uh, a uh, lot to me. I grew up watching Brian race like a lot of other people. And, um, I could have won this, you know, won this yesterday. I could have uh, packed away for the weekend and still, still been on a lot. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, two people um, that without this, without them, none of this would happen whatsoever. Uh, and that is uh, my dad, you know, for raising me in the sport and taking me around for all those years and, you know, grew up in it and that's all I wanted to do. Uh, Jenkins, James Marcus at Jenkins Performance. Without him again, this wouldn't happen. I'd like to thank my crew, uh, Matt Riddle, Jason Croft, uh, Young Mason, um, and everyone else. Uh, Patsy, sorry for Patsy. Um, and everyone else, the whole team, culprit, um, you know, all the family and friends that come along, and uh, it means a lot. Uh, yeah, very, very honoured to win this. On your nice Um, I really I don't know where to start. Um, being all over the place lately after the down race, and um, it was on a bit of a low and rack lined up to to come together, but we come back, rebuilt the boat, and just a massive thank you to Dad, Mark, you're a legend, and Mark's an easy. The hours you put in, we were trying to bring up a new setup on methanol. We almost had it all dialed in on Friday, but we had a few little dramas there. But uh, without you, like going back home and getting another motor, we wouldn't even stand up here. I feel honored to be up here in third place against two other best drivers in the country. Um, our weekend didn't end so well, but that's all part of racing. Um, and yeah, I'm just going to say a huge thank you to Tyre EJ for putting an awesome event on again. Um, and especially to the divers, thanks guys for getting in the water. Um, you didn't have to, but <laughs> yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, just, just one more thing. Thank you to all, you know, all the competitors, everyone that's come. And uh, it was, you know, it's great racing here for these guys. You know, everyone's. Everyone in the sport is very, very good people. And, you know, it's an honour to race against guys like you and, and Jimmy and Bailey. Like it's, you know, it's good. Uh, I'm to say. Thanks, thanks for the Congratulations to everyone else. All the places in the weekend. On you, Nathan. You deserved it, mate. I think you get it on the I'm in the blind boat to 
speaking to here? I'm speaking to Beck from Hurricane, Sophie's oh. mum. Well, Graham had a great day. How do you feel about the day's I effort? Fan- I feel fantastic. Actually, Beck, go and get him. Go and get Graham. Ooh. Yeah, we want to do an interview with him. Actually, Beck, can you go and round up all, all the winners? Turn the, turn the camera off. One, two. I hear about the Charlie Powerboat of Quaid Coach beating the Craig Lewis from Queensland. How do you feel about the whole situation of the weekend, Craig? Um, yeah, the, the meeting was a great meeting this weekend. The weather was beautiful. Um, good to be back down here racing. We've been here for a couple of years, obviously with the COVID stuff. So it's good to, good to be back here running, running the big game again. You were one of the first pe- person to put a cell boat into a, or a capsule boat, as we call them these days. Uh, how did that come about for you? Um, it, it, it eventuated after um, Jeff Tompkins was killed in an accident and Denise Tompkins come and see me and, and then we made the decision pretty pretty short after that and you'd believe me or not, in, in three months after I put the cell in, I tipped it over at Windsor at 115 miles an hour, climbed out of it you know, and survived. If I hadn't had that in there, I probably would have, or probably would have been killed, you know? Yeah, no, it's nice to see the change in our legislation in our sport, just to uh, bring us in any over 100 mile an hour to be in safety cells. But being one of the first people that actually did it, it's a pretty spectacular thing as well, you know, for, for, for our sport, for the safety sort of side of it. You know, that's the biggest thing about us. Um, what, how did you feel the, when the rules come in? Was it a big thing to change from safety cells from open boat? Well, I could get a bit political here because I was vice president of inboards at the time. Um, and, yeah, I, I was pushing for it big time to, to come in and eventually the rule got overturned and, well, fate happened, sort of thing, as we like to say. And, but then we, I stood me dig and, and, and it got re-implemented in and I think we need to go further steps more. Um, I agree with you on that one, Greg. We look, there's a lot of stuff that we've done in safety over the years, but I still think we need to go a little bit further. Thanks for staying there with that, uh, the pressure you put on the, uh, the New South Wales and Australian APBA as well, because it needs it. We're trying to be a little bit political here in the sense of what we're talking about. We don't need to, we're not, we're not uh, affiliated with anyone, even though we might have Taria Power Boat Aquatic Club and Sailors on it. We're actually here to support mo- motorboat racing in its infinite form. Uh, we feel it can go a lot further than this. And, uh, what are your feelings on it? Oh, most definitely. Like, um the, the way to, to set up the meetings is now, like I, I, I run my own major meetings, I haven't run one for a few years, but it, it's becoming so hard behind the scenes to set meetings up now, so you've got to become more professional now to, to you know, to warrant the amount of work that you've got to put in to putting an event together, so it, it, I think that um, we're in a transition stage now where we've got to sort of step away from being amateur based to more be, to be more professional, professional based. Exactly right. Look, it's, it's mostly the sports. But how much would you spend a year, Craig? I know it's a big question, but to just to produce a boat like you've got, what sort of money do you need to put on the table to uh, produce a boat like that, go out and race it every weekend or when you can? What sort of dollars do you need to put a boat like that on the water? Well, years ago, it used to, be, it used to, it used to cost you a gorilla or a thousand bucks to go racing for the weekend. Now it's just a, it's a bit scary now. We don't talk about that no more. Yeah, it's cubic dollars. How quick How quick do you want to spend? Look, that's what boat stands for. Bring out another thousand, Craig, you know what I mean? But look, I know in our race, and it's tens of thousands, it's not just thousands of dollars. But hey, look, it's a pleasure to have you down here from Queensland. Great to see you make the trip and all that, you know. It's a pleasure to have you anywhere, actually. And that, but a uh, pleasure to see you. Anything you'd like to say to the people before we leave? Uh, Andy and I are trying to set up something that will maybe go in the future and set our power boat racing into a new format of racing so that people actually can see us, see what we're doing. So how do you feel about us uh, trying to expand further? How do you think we might do it? This is all about what they said about becoming professional. This is what you got to do, you know. you got to get the, the drivers to talk to talk to you and then, you know, portray it out there into into media world as we do, you know. Without that now, you, without, you know, media world, you're just not, not going to cut it no more. Really. Exactly right. You know, look, we, we need to be marking ourselves on TikTok, Instagram, every every avenue that we've got. You know, there's are uh, people out there that have tried to do a few things, but uh, in the future, hopefully, we can succeed and get a bit more professional sport. So you boys are paying, being paid to come down here. Bring bring that on any day. <laughs> We used to get paid to travel on that, right, but we don't even get paid to travel, I don't think, no, these days, Craig. No, uh, yeah, Craig, you might have to, uh, have to push push a bit harder for this stuff yeah. to come back in again. Yeah, I think so. Well, pleasure speaking to you, Craig, and that, uh, nice being here. I wish you all the best, and uh, congratulations on the weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Righto.
Here we are at the Many Point Australian Powerboat Club. Here we are with, with Graham Malloy from Queensland uh, on his, in his hydroplane. He's just had a spectacular weekend. How do you feel about the Tauri Powerboat Aquatic Club weekend, Graham? Very good, actually, because... It's very hard to, it's very hard, I'll, I'll get some questions for you, Grace. Just stay here with me, you know. Graham, I know you, I know you come from Queensland. Look, that boat you've got there, it's a pretty spectacular boat. What, what breed of boat is that hydroplane? It's a Ricky Howard built boat. Um, it's actually a six litre boat that I choose to run a five litre to run in the Hopper 5. So, um, yeah. So, what brought you into the power boat racing, Graham? Yeah. I saw Bevan Cartridge. Up at our yeah, uh, local dam and said, oh, I want to get into this. There's always been in the cars. Well, a lot of people go into displacement boats. Graham, why did you choose hydroplanes? Like, I know I've raced a hydroplane myself years ago, but and there's a big difference getting that boat up on top of the water. What's swayed you to hydroplanes? Well, we started with the 4.2, and then we went into a 105 class, and then I just started with that. So, so you used to run the, the 4.2 hydroplane class in Victoria, or uh, 4.2 displacement like the Charles boat, and then we went into the 105. I bought a Charles boat, and then um, I was over that and went into uh, hydroplane. So I'm going to go race hydroplanes. So what sort of cost factors it cost you to come down here for a weekend, Graham, like to to do this sort of stuff? Like I know it's a very hard question to ask for cubic dollars and that because we think boat means bring out another thousand as I've said many times before. What sort of dollars do you need to spend on it to produce a hydroplane that and be able to come out and compete on the level that you do? Oh, you're probably looking at, you know, 1500 two grand or something like that. You know? But for a cost of the boat, there's a little bit more than $1,500. Oh, just like accommodation and fuel and... So what's a hydroplane like Ricky Howard's hydroplane and Graham, they're one of the best boat builders in Australia of hydroplanes, you know, been down there on the river for many, many years. What, do you, what sort of dollars do you think you need to put into it to become our sport professional or to help the hydroplane class five go even further than it has? Because to see this many hydroplanes on the, the course was amazing. Uh, so how do we make our sport and the sport of hydroplanes go further? Oh. Is there is there a way that love? She's saying you know, your wife's saying love, and that. But at the end of the day, and that look, it's been a pleasure speaking. I'm great. Hope you've had a great weekend, and that. And I hope um, you may earn a couple of checks to help you with that 1,500 bucks as well, Graham. Yeah, not a problem. And look, this is from Andy, Anthony Beach from Andy's Photography. No, nice to speak to you, Graham. I hope to see you again in the future very soon. Here I'm Ryan McIntosh, one of our local heroes of the weekend. You've had a great week, great weekend in Lock and Road. How do you feel about the whole weekend? Yeah, no, it was a good weekend. Um, everything went this, went to plan. Um, put a fair bit of work into it, coming leading into this event. Um, but yeah, everything went all well. It's been a while since you've actually uh, competed at the top front of the fast into the field. Uh, how, what changes do you make to that Roosh Yates motor? And I don't know that you're running a Ford motor. Any particular reason for running the Roosh Yates motor over a Chevy motor? Mate, um, I think the Fords are the fastest. Um, they make good horsepower. And, yeah, we're, it was fresh for this weekend. So, yeah, done the job. No, it's been a pleasure to see you up here. In that, in that. So where do you think you see yourself going in the future with uh, this Celebrate Racing and your racing, Ryan? Mate, um, I, I'm happy to sit, sit in six litre. Um, it's a really close uh, racing, um, probably going blown and all that sort of stuff. It um, takes a lot of toll and a lot of, lot of time and effort and money. Um, so, yeah, I'll just stick with the six litre and, yeah, it's all good. I see you mentioned money there. You know, it's cubic dollars. How quick do you want to spend? What sort of money does it cost you to run a weekend like this? Oh, mate, you're probably looking at... Without any dramas, you're probably looking at 5,000 or so, like, leading into it. Um, yeah, so... And Ryan, what sort of money do you think you'd spend through the year on a boat like that? Like, I know those Everingham boats, the sell boats, are worth about 70 to 80 grand just for a basic boat. What sort of money do you think it costs you over a 12-month on an average? Um, it all depends if the wife's standing around or um, <laughs> what I say. But, no, it's... I'm lucky I've got folks around me that um, sponsor me and build stuff for me and make stuff for me, so 
it makes it worthwhile and um, yeah, be able to be able to do it. Well, Ryan, I've got to congratulate because I've supported you for a lot of years now, and that, even with your meet as well at McGrath's meets as well, we'll put on that in there for McGrath's meets as well. Uh, look, pleasure to have you here, and that, hopefully we'll get you back on the on the microphone here again in, on the TV at Andy's and Anthony Veach's uh, commentary. Thank you very much, Ryan McIntosh. You ain't even listening to me, brother. <laughs> yeah, you can't hear it. You ain't even listening to me. You ain't even turn it off. Stop. At the Utari Aquatic, uh, Aquatic Club with Jimmy from Bulldog, mate. Uh, what an absolute fantastic event um, and a good top effort in your uh, racing this weekend, mate. Yeah, um, no, I mean, we, we always love coming to Tyree. It's always a great event. Um, they always put on a good show. Um, we didn't have and such a good time yesterday, but, mate. The difference a day makes is, 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 is tremendous and you know, we went home and just started thinking about what we can do, come back today and just make, we made all the right changes and, and then showed it on the track. Geez, the boat lifted out of the water a heap of times, mate. Dad was saying to me that, that you lifted it out of the water and then you slipped, put your foot on the brake and you went, holy God crap, that, that scared the, the living daylights out of you, didn't it? Um, yeah, no, we're well, just, just getting more comfortable in the boat, so you know, getting used to what it's doing and getting comfortable with what it's doing. And, um, yeah, no, I just, man, like every race just got better and better, so. He told me that you, uh, you'd you been through more worse con conditions than what th that was when, when that happened, is that correct? I've had a couple of tricky situations, yeah, so I wasn't too, too, too worried, but, um, you know, yeah, you, you can't take it for granted because otherwise you'll come unstuck, but, you know, it, it's just, yeah, you got, you got, to, got to have respect, so. And uh, to when you go to pull your boat out of the shed, how much is it costing you to run that boat? Um, well, like we spent probably like probably 13, 14 bucks just in fuel this weekend, so it's, it's, it's quite expensive just in fuel, and then you got all your accommodation costs and, and all sort of stuff. So expensive weekend, but it's worth it. So motor racing is an, an expensive sport, and so is powerboat racing. So it's not like it's a cheap smart sport to get into. Well, it's not cheap if you if you if you if you're paying someone to do it. But yeah, you know, like I'm a mechanic, so we build our own engines, do all our work on the boat, so. That makes it a lot more, uh, a lot more economical. Yeah. Well. Anyway, thanks, Jimmy, for talking to Andy Bowen from Andy's Powerway Videos, mate. Have it. Yeah, I'm glad you had a great weekend, and we'll see you again next year. Thanks, mate. Thank you. Nathan Mills uh, from the Hyper Five Series. Um, how did you feel about the whole weekend and the new series? Could you tell us a little bit about Nathan? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and, uh, we uh, we love coming to Taree. It's a fantastic venue for the hydro planes. And um, yeah, with the Hopper 5 Series, this current year, uh, Taree is round two. So uh, round one we were had down at uh, Yarrawonga in Victoria. So round two here at Taree. We are planning on running at Dargle for round three, but um, we'll just wait and see. Unfortunately, uh, they're still battling the uh, after effects of floods and things like that. So we'll see if, we, if that still goes ahead. But um, like I said, we love coming to Taree, yeah, so. Well, it was a great thing to see, the spectacular to see five hydroplanes or six hydroplanes running around the Manning River. We haven't seen that for a long, long time, basically since the 2005 World Championships, really. So how, who inspired and who were the people behind the Hyper 5 Series? Um, it was probably originally sort of my idea. Just um, uh, I'm originally from the New South Wales Hydroplane Club, still involved in the club and uh, help out where I can there. But in regards to the Hyper 5s, um, just realising that... Um, it's probably the class of hydroplanes in Australia that sort of had the most numbers. And so, um, yeah, we came up with a slightly different concept in terms of, um, um, so we've, the way we do the pole positions and um, the point scores and things like that, we customise it a little bit different to the APBA series, uh, system. And it's, it's all about participation. Basically, if a boat turns up and it's on the water and going to race, then they end up getting points. Obviously, you get a few more points if you win. But basically, if you start every race and finish every race throughout the weekend, you end up you end up sorry very very similar points to someone who happens to to, to win all weekends. So Nathan, you've had a fair few years in hydroplanes yourself. Why don't we see you out there anymore, mate? Yeah, well, I probably made the silly decision to sell the boat I had a couple of years ago. Um, I'm, I must admit, um, I do have a new boat, and it's uh, currently in the shed and sort of underway, a bit of a work in progress. But um, with COVID and bushfires and floods and things like that, unfortunately, it's uh, uh, taking a bit longer than what I planned. But um, yeah, fingers crossed, we'll uh, we'll be back on the water very soon. I noticed the Hyper Five Series. Uh, there's a fair bit gone in it. What sort of cost factors that cost it to run a series like this? Um, well, thankfully, not not too much. I mean, dare I say, um, I put a bit of um, 
quite a bit of time into it, just in sort of promoting the series overall, but also each individual boat, things like that. But um, a little bit of cost in sort of a couple of the promotional items and things like that. But thankfully, you know, Facebook pages don't cost that much and things like that. But um, yeah, so there's uh, certainly a whole lot more effort. Like if I happen to be <laughs> charging <laughs> charging um, money, it probably would you know, tally up quite a bit. But um, yeah, it's just something I absolutely love and I'm keen to see grow and prosper and um, yeah, get more and more boats involved. Well, look, it's a pleasure to have you up here for the weekend at Tara, and that, look, it'll be a pleasure to see you again. It's always been a pleasure every time I have seen you. I uh, can't wait to see you back on the water yourself, Nathan, that, and congratulations on the Hyperfive series. It's been a pleasure to just to watch it, actually, as a, as a spectator and as a former driver and that. But look, looking forward to the future of Hyper 5. And we'll see you at Should be good in terms of 2023. Like I said, we had five boats. We were supposed to have a sixth, and unfortunately one of the... Um, Victorian boats had to pull out kind of about a week ago, unfortunately, but um, yes, yeah, so we should have had six. But fingers crossed when we're back at uh, ESA 2023, fingers crossed we'll have seven or eight boats. So, yeah. That should be awesome, yeah. mate. Well, nice speaking to you, Nathan. Pleasure to meet you. Have a good time again, and we'll speak to you in the future. Thank you very much. Here we are with Justin from Quiver Racing. How have you had the weekend? How did it go for you, Justin? Oh, look, brand new boat. Um, you know, we got a couple of races in, we had some small gremlins, a lot of, you know, adjustments and changes and, um, you know, overall at the end, at the start of the weekend it was a bag of shit and at the end of the weekend we're like, wow, this thing's got a lot of potential. I noticed at the end of the weekend it was really starting to get up and go on that blue boat, it's a spectacular paint job on that boat. Who did the paint job on it just for the starters? Um, Adrian from Airbrush World, so yeah, yeah, he's an amazing artist and yeah, he's so how long have you been in powerboat racing for? Well, I've been doing it about 12 years with an open deck Brucey, you know, 5 litre and 105. And, but this is, you know, the Evercraft, the capsule boat, it's a different beast. So what's the change between an open boat, well, I've got Brucey because I have a Brucey myself, what's the difference between that and a sailboat? Well, look, you, you've, you're a lot further forward um, and you, you really... I guess, I mean, I, yeah, on Friday we ran it, I'm like, oh, this thing's slow as, but you look at the data and you go, wow, it's actually it's going a lot quicker than you feel. Because you're inside the cell. Yeah. I noticed that myself in my brain back that I've got, at the end of the day when I did drive it, it's just a completely different feeling being inside the boat, the way you can hear everything outside and the wind blowing in your face. So what swayed you to go to a cell boat other than the laws of our sport? Look, I mean... I guess safety, you know, and I've had, you know, some people say, oh, you should get a sailboat or at least, you know, look at that. And I could see the way the sport was going. So we bought the boat quite a while ago and just went slowly as we got the money, you know, we developed, we, we built it ourselves. So, so what sort of dollars do you have to put into a weekend like this? Dollars? Oh, God. I mean, what, uh, uh, are we talking uh, to, to buy a boat? Are we talking to... Well, uh, like to buy a boat to start off with. What sort of base, base outline did you have to come up with? Look, our, our 105 boat that we had a lot of success with, that was not a big dollar package. You, you know, 20, 25 grand. So people can get into the sport. They don't have to actually go into a, a $100,000 sailboat and to compete or just have fun into the sport. Yeah, that's right. I mean, yeah, 15 grand and then, yeah, do a bit of engine work yourself and get out there and have a crack. So where are you from yourself? Um, Silverdale, near Penrith in New South Wales. Oh, so you race up a little bit like the Powerboat Club, which I've seen you for many years, and a Dargle and that, and I suppose you went to deep water as well. Yeah, been in deep water a couple of times before it closed, which is good. I got to have a, you know, a few very tight circuit. Tight, yeah, and it has a bit of a, a, yeah, a bit of a bit of a kink, kink as you come to it. Yeah, it's near where the river opening is. So, where do you see yourself in the next few years with powerboat racing? Um, I mean, look, I probably I'd like to have a crack at some of the big boys with a smaller engine, maybe like with a six liter, and just do, I guess, what some of you know the. The Chris Pugsley does with shenanigans and just really stir up the big boys with a, with a little engine. Well, the oxygen thief always did you know, don't know how to take away everyone else's air. So and look at look at Pugsley and that, you know those Smiths down there. We've got Sir Alan Smith these days. I'm pretty sure we should get him up here for an interview too. Been a pleasure to speak to you. Hopefully, we'll see you back over the next Easter Classic and the next race down in Sydney. Thank, Thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you. Blake from Upper Hawkesbury Powerboat Club. Blake, they had a great weekend. Yeah, no, it was a good weekend. Had by all. Good. Yeah, pretty, pretty happy with 
how it all went. So you're a hydroplane driver. How did you get into hydroplanes? Uh, you know, just loved them all my life. That's sort of where, where the family, the direction we went. So when you say the family, like your family been in racing for a fair while, Blake? Oh, I started off in the juniors, me and my brother. Um, the old boy raced many, many years ago, but um, sort of come back, back to it with me and my brother in the juniors and then sort of kept progressing, progressing, and then um, here we are now. So, so hydroplanes are a pretty specialised sort of boat compared to dis displacement boats. Was there any particular reason the family went for the hydroplane racing? Uh, just different, good feeling. Some, just different sort of style, different runs different to anything else really, it's unreal. I know myself, I used to have a hydro myself and an old Healy, but it's a lot different to the cell boats you have these days. That, but I noticed that when you've got to get them off the line, you've got to give them a big, fair bit of a bootful to get them out of the water. Why is that, you reckon? No, I just, we're only running five litres and sort of trying to work with what we've got. But um, we're, we're all slowly getting there. There's a few of us that are a bit bit more advanced in where we're at, but um, we're all we're all always learning. So I see you run the Hyper 5 Series now. How do you feel about that Hyper 5 Series? It looks like it's really taken off. Oh, you know, wouldn't wouldn't want to run any other class really. Like the people around you, the just it's, everything's reliable. People around you are unreal. It's just run by great great group of blokes and just couldn't be happier. Yeah, Nathan's done a great job of putting putting the series together, Nathan Mills. And that, look, I, so I did mention there you're part of Harper Horsham Powerboat Club, or you're not really? No, uh, a part of uh, Dargle, Dargle Valley Boat Club. Oh, I know Dargle Valley Boat with Sir J Alan Smith, uh, one of our legends of the sport, young Wayne out there. It's a shame we didn't get to see Wayne in his GP up here. And that, I'm part of Dargle myself, running the water ski school out of there for many years. So how old are you now, Blake? Uh, I'm 19. 19, um, had a few years in juniors and the F4s and that. Now he's sort of got the hydro back on the water after a few years of mucking around with it. A few, few little dramas in between, but we're back out there now, so which is good. So what sort of top speed do you get out of your boat? Uh, today's probably the quickest the boat's ever gone in circuit race spec. Done max of 120 today, which we're pretty pretty happy with. Pretty, pretty much our pretty much the point where we're not going to push it too much further. We'll just 120 mile an hour? Mile an hour, yep. 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 Um, we'll sort of just leave it there and just work on driving it. Yeah, it seemed to be going really well. On that. But at the end of the day, you had a bit of a problem there. I noticed uh, the propeller wasn't on the back of the boat when you come in. Uh, no, that was Lockie Bella. Oh, that was Lockie, so yeah, yeah, you were impatient. He was there. But anyway, but no, look, it's a pleasure seeing you here. What is your next race when you're going to? Uh, good question. We're, wherever the next round of the uh, Hyper 5 is, really, Dargle. wouldn't miss it. I think we'll see you at Dargle over there. Uh, if they run it, see what happens, see what happens. Well, pleasure speaking to you. Hopefully we'll see you again in the future soon. Hopefully it is at Dargle, which is uh, your local club. And we'll see you again, and hopefully there's another great track to run on there at Dargle. And, uh, and with Joy and Alan and everyone down that way, it's, a, it's a, like a family atmosphere at uh, Dargle Valley Boat Club. So, look, it's a pleasure from Andy's, Andy's photography and video. And that and Anthony Beach, uh, pleasure to speak to you, mate. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thanks, mate. Down. Hi, I'm here with Nathan Barry, the winner of the 2022 King of the River, mate. Congratulations, Nathan. Thank you very much, Andy. Uh, very good. Yeah, and I bet your team's very happy with um, winning all those big events that you did, mate. They are. They're very happy. Everyone's very happy, and I'm very happy. Did you do a shoey at the end? Nah, we just done the hourglass before. How was the, uh, the hourglass, mate? Yeah, it was good. Very good. Hard to drink? Yeah, it was, yeah, was alright. Yeah. Well, it was hard getting through it, but lucky I had all the boys. So we all got through it alright. Yeah, your team has put in a big effort this weekend here in Tari on the mighty Menning River, and... Uh, Mate, it'd be, it's it's un unfortunate for Nikki and Jason to see it, not see it, but um, mate, I've got, I can send them videos to them and they can see it on my YouTube channel. Ah, uh, they've been um, Snapchatting and video, Facebooking and all that all weekend, but nah, it sucks they're not here. The whole family's not here, but nah, what can you do? Yeah, that's exactly right, Nath. And uh, what other races did you win, mate? Uh, the Vic Curry, the Liberty Cup, and then the King of the River. Those three big events, yeah. And um, Bulldog uh, beat J Jimmy and Bulldog beat just beat you on the line. What happened there, mate? Tell me about it. He done very good. He done very very good. I'm very happy for Jimmy. He, he he was good. He he drove his ass off, and he you know they must have 
done a bit of this and a bit of that on the boat, and fucking he worked for it. Good on him. And how much work do you put into that boat, Nathan? And how much does it does it cost to pull it out of the shed every right when a race meeting comes up? Ah, uh, not a whole lot. You just, you know, if you, everything goes good, it doesn't cost you much. Fuel and entry and stuff like that. But it's all the work. You're always doing stuff, cleaning stuff. You know, just whatever. So, yeah. Obviously, you got your dad behind you that, uh, that help, helps out with the team, and because uh, he's the he's the boss of Team Culprit, and um, or, and also and uh, also your roof tiler um, business is a sponsor as well. Is that correct? That is correct. Very correct. Without my old man, none of this is possible. So. And and I like your, your new jacket. It's um, it says uh, Easter Palo Classic King of the River champion so congratulations Nathan and thanks for talking to Andy Bowen from Andy's Powerboat videos mate we'll see you next year I'm here with Tatey the crash boat driver uh, for the 2022 Tari Easter Powerboat Classic long, June long weekend mate t uh, tell me how, how the the, uh, the racing looks from your point of view on the crash boat mate oh, it's always scary it's always scary every single race. We think, don't you do it? Don't you do it? We cross our fingers and hope that no one does anything stupid. Mate, it would be absolutely the the, the atmosphere and the thri the 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 thrill of those boats flying and up the back straight and uh, and just the G force of them. And, and do you, can you feel the the the, the roar of these GP hydros that? The blown alcohol displacement boats. Can you feel the the thunder of them on the on the um, crash boat? Quite often, I think, should I jump in the air and hope the boat goes underneath me because it gets pretty scary. Yeah, it, it would. So it's like a drag. So it's like drag boat, uh, drag boat racing, or, or or drag racing. Is that how the the, the G force or the thunder of from these? GP hydros or from the or, or from the um, blown alcohol displacement boats, Tate? Honestly, I don't listen to the noise. I think about. I hope everyone comes out of this race safe. So, um, so when you're on the boat, mate, does it? What are you watching? Are you watching the races as well, or are you just take, listening to the radios? Or uh, tell tell me what you do at from. I'm always on the bank filming. But tell me, what is your job, Tate? I am widespread. I look at the races. That's about it. I look at the races and I call the flags and I do what I got to do. Okay, fair enough. Then. Yeah. So uh, you, you you can't. So you you're not allowed to watch the races. I watch the race. I watch the races. I watch the races and I wait for something bad to happen. And how how did how did those boat drivers come out from those crashes today? There was a there was a junior, and there was also a um, Kane in that Formula One uh, Grand Prix powerboat. What how, how did how did that happen, mate? We lifted we lifted Kane out of the water with our new winch on our boat, and that was perfect. I see that new winch, and who built that? We did between me and a local fabricator. We we engineered that and built it. And Geez, you've done a great job of it. Is that the new rescue boat that replaced Upper Hawkesbury Powerboat Club One? That's it. Uh, the Upper Hawkesbury cost us too much money, and that's the replacement. Mate, it looks absolutely fantastic, and uh, I love the uh, the steel work in it. So was that done by um, uh, Dicko at uh, at his at his um, steels works or? No, we had a local uh, fellow from Harrington because it's the Stones, Stones Oysters Power Boat. No, uh, it's down at Stones Oysters Boat. Oh, so Stoney did it? They supplied the boat and we had an engineer, uh, Joel Clark, his name is, built the frame. And I did all the wiring for the winch and designed all the winch. So uh, it worked good. Yeah, well, it looks really good, Tate. And I've got to admit, mate, um, It'd be great to see it again next next uh, Tari Easter Powerboat Classic here on the banks of the Mighty Manning River. It, it's a good boat, and we look forward to using it. No worries, Tate. But thanks for talking to Andy Bowen from Andy's Powerboat Videos, and we'll see you next year, mate. Thanks very much.